हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू माई क्लास वी आर इन मॉड्यूल फाइव एंड इन द लास्ट क्लास वी कवर्ड इंटरफरेंस इन थिन पैरलर फिल्म एंड इन वेज शेप्ड फिल्म वेयर इन वी टाक अबाउट इंटरफरेंस पैटर्न प्रोड्यूस्ड बाई डिफरेंट रेज विच आर जनरेटेड थ्रू मल्टीपल रिफ्लेक्शन एंड रिफ्रैक्शन या वी कंसिडर्ड द इंटरफरेंस एमंग वेरियस ट्रांसमिटेड एंड वेरियस रिफ्लेक्टेड रेज today we will start new topic which is newton's ring yeah. the experimental arrangement of newton's ring uh, experiment is shown here schematically now here the point source as is kept here and from the point source the spherical wave front emits and they are made parallel using a convex lens now this parallel beam of light they fall on a semi silvered glass plate or beam splitter now this beam splitter what does it do is that it reflect uh, the incoming beams towards the uh, the arrangement which is shown here yeah now this arrangement here is a lens kept on the top of a plain glass plate okay this is glass plate okay and this is a flat glass plate and this is a, a convex lens now when the beam falls normally on this system then from the first interface first surface of the lens the beam ref, uh, refract and then it goes to the second interface now between the second interface or lower interface of the lens and the top interface of the glass plate there is an air film yeah let us represent this air film with uh, uh, some color let us pick uh, this color this is the air film which is between the uh, the lens and the glass plate the flat glass plate okay now if you zoom in the area here let us zoom in this part now after zooming it this is what you will see this is the lens okay and this is your top interface of the glass the flat glass okay what happens is that the rays fall uh, falls here and then it get reflected partially and transmitted partially and the transmitted rays again get reflected partially up okay it now these rays these uh, the reflected one they interfere okay this our parallel rays and then we put lens and then they goes in our eyes and there we see uh the interference pa pattern now due to the this air film there is a part difference between the two reflected rays and this is similar to the concept of wedge shape film yeah in wedge sa shape film we saw that two glass plates are oriented at some angle and this arrangement forms a wedge shape air film here too the convex lens and this plain glass plate it is forming a wedge yeah and in this wedge air is there and this air film now is responsible for the interference pattern which we observe here in this newton's ring experiment now suppose the incident ray has electric field amplitude e and the first reflected ray means this ray it has amplitude e1 r and the second reflected ray has amplitude e2 r now this reflected beams e1 r and e2 r they will interfere and produce interference fringes now we know that in 3d a uh, convex lens is a spherical structure or it it has a circular symmetry yeah convex lens is uh, uh, having a circular symmetry it has a center 
are around the center there are symmetries now if we pick a certain air thickness here then this air thickness suppose is at certain distance from the center of this lens then if we move around the lens with the same radius suppose this is our small r radius then the air film thickness would be the same okay if you view the same arrangement from the top then you will see lens which is like this and a glass plate which is below the lens okay and if we pick a certain point which is at a r distance away from the center of the lens and then if you draw a circle of radius a small r then the air gap the thickness of the air gap between the glass plate and the lens would be same on this circle okay and since the air gap is same on this circle the condition of maxima and minima are the type of fringe which is observed due to this air gap will have the same intensity what i mean by saying the same intensity is that if a bright ring is formed due to this air gap then uh, or if bright color is appearing or if a dark color is appearing due to this air gap then this dark color would be in form of circle or the bright color would be in form of circle around this center of the lens therefore the shape of the fringe in newton's ring experiment will be circular okay we will observe concentric circular ring pattern in newton's ring experiment i repeat since there is a circular symmetry in this arrangement a air gap which is between the convex lens lower surface of convex lens and upper surface of glass plate this air gap will form a circle okay if we fix the height of the air gap then we will find the same height of the air gap if we move around the center of the lens on circle okay and this is what we are doing this is the circle over which the air gap is constant similarly we can uh, again draw a second circle over which the width of the air gap would again be fixed now since the width of the or, 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 width of the air gap does not alter if we move on the periphery on the circumference of this circle therefore the intensity would be the same on this circle and therefore if a dark free, uh, pattern is seen on this circle then uh, it would be dark throughout means at all point of the circle we will see dark and if it is bright then at all point of the circle okay on the periphery of the circle on the circumference of the circle we will see bright yeah and therefore the fringe pattern in newton's ring experiment due to symmetry of the setup is concentric circular okay <coughs> now we see that as we move away from the center of this system this arrangement the thickness of the air gap increases and therefore we may correlate this uh, system from the wedge shape film which we studied in last class okay now suppose at certain point the air gap thickness is d small d which of course would be the function of x and x is the distance of this particular air gap from the center of the system okay this is the center of the lens and from here the air gap which is of uh, d width is at a distance x and we also assume that radius of curvature of the lens is r and we have drawn here the radius of curvature from the this uh, point at the circumference to the center of the uh, this lower interface here if if you draw a bigger circle here then this bigger circle will have center here and from here we have joined uh, it and the distance this would be capital capital r which is the radius of curvature okay if 
d is given x is known r is known then the from the center to the center of the curvature the distance would be r minus d here yeah, this is the distance capital r minus small d okay now <coughs> from the figure using pythagoras theorem x square would be r square minus r minus d whole square yeah you can see here in this figure x square the, because r square would be from the Py Pythagoras theorem r square would be x square plus r minus d whole square and therefore from here the expression of x would be r square minus r minus d whole square. Okay. Now if you expand it then after simplification we get this expression for s x square. Now since the radius of curvature which is usually used in such setup is very large as compared to the other distances involved. Therefore, we can safely neglect the d square because d is air gap which is very small re relatively very small. Therefore, x square can be approximated uh, to 2rd. Okay. Now, <coughs> similar to what we did in West uh, film, we are only considering two reflected beams okay first two reflected beams okay now if we want to uh, find the condition of maxima and minima then we will again go back to our previous lecture where we uh, have uh, already found the condition of maxima minima for wet safe film or for um, uh, a glass plate of uniform thickness thin glass plate and from there we get this yeah 2 nfd is equal to m plus half lambda naught. This is the condition of maxima okay, in reflection of course. Okay. This we have already derived in case, in case of thin glass plate. Okay. The point to be noted here is that cos theta term is absent from the left hand side. Why is it absent? Because from the figure the incidence is almost at normal. Okay, the incidence is almost normal and therefore the angle which our beam will make with the normal to the interface would be almost equal to 0 and therefore we can safely neglect cos theta term and therefore we do not have cos theta term here in this expression on the left hand side of equation 21 2 nf dm only. Okay. Why, why 2? Because the air thickness is being travelled twice by the second reflected beam okay, by ER2. Okay. Now, this is a condition of maxima, maxima and therefore, it should be integral multiple of lambda, but you are seeing it is not integral multiple of lambda. Okay, there is something else. Why there is something extra? Because here in this figure, what you see is that suppose this is the, your interface and then the light is coming in this direction and then it is getting reflected reflected here and then it is coming here and then again it is getting reflected. Now this first reflection it is from denser medium to rarer medium because this is air, this is glass and this is also glass. The first reflection is from denser medium to the rarer medium while the second reflection is from rarer medium to denser medium. Here too the extra phase difference of pi therefore appears and that if you take into account then the the condition of minima now get converted into the condition of maxima which is appearing here in form of equation 21. Okay. Now if the condition of maxima is known then let us find out the radius of the mth bright ring. How to find out the radius of the mth bright ring? Let us go back to the figure and we know the radius is express, expressed by small x and in this expression of 21 we have d. How the d is related to x through equation 21? We will substitute for d here then d would be equal to x square upon 2r. We will substitute uh, this value of d into equation number 21. What is the value of d? d dm would be x m square plus 2 r capital R. I am associating subscript m with d and x just to 
uh, indicate that uh, these calculations are for mth bright ring. Okay. Now, if you do this substitution, then for the bright ring, the value of the radius for mth bright ring, the value of the radius is here, yeah, and it is given by this uh, expression number 22, where m of course is an integer number. Okay. Now, the smallest value of m is equal to 0, okay, and the, therefore, innermost bright ring correspond to m is equal to 0. Okay. <coughs> now, you can rearrange equation number 22, and if because we are talking about first bright ring, then sometimes people uh, think that m should start from 1, and if you want m to start from 1, then the equation get modified slightly. Okay. Then after rearrangement equation 22 get converted into 23, they are the same thing, but written differently. Now, once the expression for our expression for radius of mth bright ring is known, let us find it for the dark ring. Now, we will follow the same thing here, the condition of maximize here. Similarly, we can get the condition of minima okay. and uh, there uh, we need uh, instead of odd integral multiple, we will uh, resort to integral multiple of wavelength and from there we get this expression. This is the expression for radius of dark ring, mth dark ring. Here again small m is an integer and the, you can see that central dark circle or central dark pattern corresponds to m is equal to 0. Okay, because when m is equal to 0, x m is equal to 0 which of obviously correspond to the central patch, central dark pattern. Okay. Then the first dark ring arises when m is equal to 1, for the second we will have to substitute m is equal to 2. Okay. Now, again this is the lower interface of the lens and this is the upper interface of the glass, the glass plate. Now, you know at for m is equal to 0, there is no thickness here, yeah? the glass plate is touching the the convex surf surface of the lens here. Yeah? This is this type of arrangement, the glass plate is touching the lens, okay? there is 0 air gap. If the air gap is 0, then the path length difference is also 0. Okay? The, uh, there are uh, the interference is happening between two ref uh, first two reflected beams. The first reflection is at uh, the interface of uh, lower surface of glass or lower surface of lens, and the se second reflection is happening at the top surface of glass plate. The, these two reflections then interfere, but if the air gap between the two interfaces is zero then the path length difference between these two rays would be 0. And if the path length difference is 0, then one can, one quickly says that, that it is the condition of maxima. But before commenting this, before making such an statement, we must think about the internal and external reflections which are occurring here in this case. Yeah? In our case, the first reflection is uh, from denser medium to rarer medium and the second reflection is from rarer medium to denser medium. Therefore, we must take into account the extra phase di difference pi which is creating due to these reflections. And therefore, even if the optical path length difference is 0, due to reflection the extra phase difference of pi is being introduced and therefore, the condition of maxima is the condition of minima and vice versa. And therefore, even for with 0 uh, uh, air gap, we get dark patch at the center. Okay? But while performing the experiment, sometimes so happen is that we do not see the dark pattern, people see bright there. This is because insertion of small dust particle, okay? the, the, the two surfaces do not contact uh, touches properly, yeah? because a few dust particles sit there and we see some bright patches uh, uh, there too. But if the two plates of uh, Piece, two pieces of glass glass are in good contact, good contact means if there is no dust, then the central fringe at point x naught is equal to 0, x naught means for the 0th order fringe, 
it will clearly be a minimum in irradiance here yeah? you will not see any uh, bright patch there okay it would be perfect dark now the second observ observation what people uh, have observed in case of newton's ring is that the center is uh, obviously uh, dark this we have uh, uh, understood and then a bright and then again dark but if we keep drawing more circles then what happens is that the circle is start to come closer as we move away and their width also reduces okay if you go away from the center the width of these fringes reduces okay and this is observed in this case then the people start asking like what is the reason why does the uh, the fringes start to shrink if we move away readily outward okay this can be understood from sorry this can be understood from this equation equation number 24 okay equation number 24 can be written as x m square is equal to m lambda f into capital r okay now we want to see or we want to observe the variation in the radius of different fringes with respect to change in order okay if we go readily outward then the fringe width decreases means if we increase the order of fringes then fringe width is decreasing yeah or let me reframe it if we increase the order of the fringe then we see that the fringe width is decreasing and this statement is similar to that if we go readily outward the fringe width decreases okay now this decrease in the fringe fringe width can be seen in this relation this equation 24 how differentiated with respect to m now if you differentiate this equation then you get equation number 26 this represents variation in the radius of fringe with respect to fringe order now we see that this variation is inversely proportional to the fringe radius okay it means as the radius increases dxm by dm which is the left hand side this becomes fast yeah this is what it is told written here the bigger xm is the faster it changes with m okay and the equation number 26 exactly says it now we see that that in as we move away from the center the fringe start to shrink yeah this this the fringe fringe become closer and closer now what this can also be understood from the fact that this arrangement this is the upper surface of glass and this is the convex lens surface this is not perfectly a linear wedge the linear wedge is like this okay the it is linearly increasing but here you see the surface is not a flat here it it is having some curvature okay now due to this curvature now this air gap let me pick a different color now air gap here is this much but as we move outward the air gap quickly increases okay or alternatively what we can see is that the condition of maxima and minima the maxima goes to minima after lambda by 2 distance why because the second beam second reflected ray travels the this air width twice and therefore as soon as there is a uh, increase in the width by lambda not by 2 the dark fringe will go to bright or bright fringe will go to dark as we move away from the center of this arrangement the fringe thickness or the air gap thickness increases rapidly yeah the fringe the darker dark fringe goes to bright when there is a 
difference in the air gap by lambda by 2. Okay. If air gap increases by lambda by 2, the dark fringe changes from uh, fringes changes to bright one or the bright fringe changes to darker one, dark one. This changeover happens rapidly here when we are far away from the center, but this changeover is slow here okay, because the width is increasing rapidly here. Okay. Since the width is changing rapidly here, therefore, the bright and dark fringes appears to be very close, yeah? they, they become very thin, okay? while when we are close to the center, they, be, they are very wide. Okay? Newton's ring fringes, we know that we, the light is almost falling normally and then we are getting concentric circular fringe pattern. Therefore, this satisfies the criteria of being Fezau fringes. Okay. Therefore, these are <coughs> Fezau fringes and they are different from Hedinger fringes. Okay. Fezau fringes are different from Hedinger fringes. What is the difference? The difference is that the diameter of the fringes, okay. we know that both Fezau and Hedinger fringes are circular. Yeah. They both are circular. Okay. <coughs> and this is say Hedinger, Hedinger. They both are circular. Just by looking at them, it would be difficult to distinguish between the two. They both are concentric circular fringes. Now, if you, you, uh, you see uh, <coughs> the diameter of the rings, they vary differently with M. In case of Fezau fringes, m is 0 at the center and then if you move readily outward then m increases here m is equal to 1 here m is equal to 2 and this is what also happens in case of newton's ring experiment okay here m is equal to 3 i and so on while what happens in hedinger fringes at the center m is maximum m is equal to m max at the center Okay, and then if you move away, then the fringes reduces m max minus 1 and the 0th fringe appear at the outermost uh, periphery. Yeah. The outermost fringe in Hedinger uh, fringes is uh, designated by m is equal to 0, while the innermost fringe in Fejau fringes is designated by m is equal to 0, they are opposite. Okay. This is also clear from uh, this expression. Uh, expression number 24. This is the radius of uh, the dark ring yeah, and this is we see that there is a <coughs> as m is equal to 0 then, then x m is also 0. If as m uh, increases x m also increases it means the central fringe uh, in Fezau fringes or in Newton's ring experiment uh, fringes the central fringe is of lowest order while opposite is the case in case of Hedinger fringes. In Hedinger fringes, the central fringe is of highest order and the outermost fringe is of lowest order. Okay. These are the two, uh, these are the basic difference between the two types of fringes. Okay. And this is all for today and thank you for listening me, see you in the next class.